Hey listeners, it's Paul Andriola here. Why not join our community at Small Cap Discoveries where we offer our members direct access to some of the best microcap investment opportunities available. Our members are getting access to premium microcap financings, research reports, and direct access to management. Sign up today at www.smallcapdiscoveries.com. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Small Cap Discoveries conference call. Today on our call, we have C CEO Sebastian Mayo from DBox Technologies. DBox trades on the TSX under the symbol DBO and on the OTC under DBOXF. The company is currently trading at 10 cents with roughly 223 million shares outstanding or about a $22 million market cap. I'd now like to hand it over to Paul Andriola. Hey, thanks a lot, Trevor. Um, yeah, really happy to have the, the team from DBOX here. Um, we're going to look into some, I think, some pretty cool and fun technology. And hopefully we're all going to learn what haptic technology means, because I'm pretty sure a lot of us don't know what that means. So happy to have you guys here. Sebastian, um, you're going to be taking over. You've got a pitch deck, so I'm just going to hand it over to you and let you run with it. Thank you, Paul. Uh, thank you for having us here. So definitely, we're really happy to talk about DBOX. Uh, Steve, uh, David, and I, and definitely we put a small deck together, uh, definitely for people that are more new to DBOX to discuss about our, what's our vision, what is the, the haptic, etc. And definitely as well, some uh, highlight of the last year for people that have been following us. So let's, let's kick that. So, so Mr. Steve, do you want to next, please? So quickly before starting, of course, uh, nothing is a solicitation or recommendation to buy and share. Definitely we're there to provide overview of the business and definitely answering as much question as we can in the second part. Next. So let's start from the beginning. So one thing, of course, we know it's since the beginning of time, human has been consuming entertainment. They've been experiencing, they wanted to feel emotion. This is not new. Of course, it evolves. Roughly 80 years ago, with the introduction of television, it was all about two dimensions, sight and sound. This was a great innovation, but definitely now this is not enough. Why? In 2022, everything is going virtual. Think about gaming, think about simulation, even think about the meta in all those directions. On top of that, people are craving for more immersivity and experiences. Think about the experience economy, millennials, brand connection, etc. But there was one piece missing. And something we're missing is that the best transmission vehicle to fully live the emotion is the body. And that's what is haptic it's all about. That's why it's time for the haptic revolution, where the body becomes the central part of the experience. Next. But of course, what is haptic? For some people, it's a gimmick. It's a, it's a ringtone, it's a vibration. Well, this is true, but this is not true haptics. What is the real haptic and it's proven is the haptic has the capacity to involve the body and the experiences. What does it mean? It creates sense of presence. It creates brain connectivity. It explains why you are immersed and when you feel something closer to reality. It amplifies emotion. And even in some segments, such as professional training, it's able to make uh, training cueing to the brain to improve perform performance. So, so no, haptic is not a gimmick. It's not fading away and it's gonna be everywhere. This is important for the experience of the future. This is important for the prison experience. This is true because people want to have the best TV, the best sound, the best everything, and be the closest as possible to emotion. So DBUX has been throughout those years mastering and lead there the haptic field with the technology and with a, a, an ecosystem we're gonna be explaining that includes of course a lot of movement, vibration and texture to bring the best experience for the consumers. Next. This is 2022. In the past, we were dreaming as kids to do everything. People wants to fly. People wants to be a professional racer and make drifting. You want to feel the feel free fall of a roller coaster. Just take it as well as a concert. When you're going down there, you can feel the music going through your veins in your body. This is this is this is haptic. Haptics makes that possible for everyone 
at home and in commercial venues. Next. What DBOX succeeded to put in place in the last 20 years, even before we were talking about Aptic, is to master that field. With a, with a lot of dollar innovation, of course, with, a, with patented technology, we have developed an end-to-end Aptic -end solution with codes, processor, and hardware, which is able to ingest pretty much any type of content. Think music, think relaxation, movies, series, telemetry, racing, we are able to create experiences uh, and to connect and to bring that to the consumer. As well, people want to have multiple devices, TV, tablet, screen, theatrical screen, big screen. Dball is agnostic of all those devices. We connect with them and we are able to provide that. So our ecosystem is technology, it's scientific, it's knowledge of the body, it is as well to be able to work in the industry. Next slide. So one big part we know, simply said, of course, there's an angle. We want to be the Netflix of Aptic. If you think about Netflix, you're talking about various type of content. We already have uh, above 2000 experiences ranging as you can see from movies, TV series and PC gaming. But everything is about scalability and how we do that. So of course we had initially manual processes, but now we have of course AI that we can use on our database of thousands of movies. We have real time adaptive gaming and audio, which is able to, inter to interact in real time. We are working as well with gaming engines. So through various manual AI, SDK and industry standard tools, we're able to scale content with all our partners. Because of course, what is important is people want to consummate various types of content. It's about breadth and depth of the content library. Next slide. You still think it's a gimmick? Well, let's talk about, about the scientific part around that. Of course, we know people like that. And we love that people are saying that. But what is more important with us is your true body has been proven to scientific research to react to aptics. So yes, you like it but we're measure, measuring that. We're measuring the brain connectivity. We're measuring uh, that it has an impact on brain recognition. It, uh, it reduces motion sickness and amplifies emotion and sense of presence. People might say it's natural. The science proves it. And that's why this is a, a central part and it won't be fading away. Next slide. So of course, Aptic is a growing and booming market. Aptic is going to be everywhere in the future. Of course, we're talking about various markets, but it's going to be in wellness, healthcare, entertainment, training, simulation. So it's a big booming market. VR simulation, you already see that experience economy. Of course, as a company from D-Box, we would want to be everywhere, but we decided to pick a couple of segments when we feel the market is more appropriate to launch and monetize our Aptic platform. Next slide, Steve. So D-Box is currently focusing on three segments, commercial entertainment, home entertainment, and professional simulation. In the commercial entertainment, our monetization goes, of course, in the theatrical field, where we're in more than 40 countries, over 20,000 seats where people pay a premium. This is a great place to make money. It's a great recurring revenue model, and as well as a good showcase to introduce people to Aptic. And even in a post-pandemic world, I can confirm you people thought that the cinema were dead. Results of tickets that we're selling are even better than before the pandemic. Secondly, of course, everything is going into immersive and commercial entertainment. Think about arcade, museum transforming with technology, dome, uh, theme park, etc. So D-Box is able to and is providing those haptic experiences to all those fields to a, a, a combination of sales of system and of course recurring business model. On the right part, there's professional simulation where people don't buy Aptic to, to entertain, they buy from professional training. So D-Box is Aptic definitely in the automobile, the, the military, the helicopter, the aviation. So people are ranging in the past, we were seeing only the CAE of this word with simulator at 20 million. But people know at home that a flight simulator that is costing a hundred bucks at home is close to reality. So that's what is happening in professional simulation. There's those small 
footprint simulator between 20,000 to 50,000 where people get trained, get queuing and reduce cost of training. One of the last one that we have been pushing more in the last two years has been on entertainment. We feel there's a good, there's a good timing to introduce AppSig more to a wide range of people at home, definitely on the gaming side, and as well for all people that wants to mainly to do that are doing movies and series. So these are the three segments that has we feel has a good attraction rate, has a great potential, and are the current segment DBox is focusing. Next slide, and I'll revert that to Mr. CFO David. Yes, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So uh, within the, the, the graph on the left side, uh, you can uh, see and appreciate that DBox is a 30 million um, revenue business. And uh, of course, as many uh, entertainment company, uh, COVID has a, a tremendous impact on us on fiscal 2020 and fiscal 2021, uh, which was the, the major year for, for COVID. Um, and of course, uh, that has seriously impacted our EBITDA uh, uh, as you can see on the red red side of the uh, uh, of the, the business, but before COVID, we were a business that was uh, we had a, a positive EBITDA. So last year, we 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 had to go through the financial market to to raise money uh, on March uh, 2021. But what the most important thing is that we didn't consume uh, any uh, any cash during the, the the COVID period, and we're still there today. So Steve, you can move to the next slide and see where we are today. So when you look at the quarterly performance, uh, you can see that we're, we're back to, uh, to pre-COVID level on a, uh, on a quarterly basis. We are where we were at, on Q3 2020, so that's great. And you see that our adjusted EBITDA also uh, come back to the level of pre-COVID. And uh, this is uh, mainly, as Sebastian mentioned earlier, that our uh, reoccurring re revenue from the theatrical business selling tickets. So this is increasing uh, over the next, the last quarter, and uh, that that's great. And uh, so we we have uh, a strong growth. We are, uh, as we, as you can see on the the slide, 86 percent year over year revenue up. And uh, as I mentioned, the people are, go are going back to the movie and uh, this is uh, impacting our right of use uh, tremendously uh, and uh, having a tremendous impact on our EBITDA level. And of course, uh, as I mentioned, our balance sheet position, cash consumption, uh, debt level is, uh, is in better situation than it was uh, during COVID. Next slide. Thanks, David. So to put a link definitely about that file, so what we have been doing during those supply chain time and COVID time, DBUG has been executing because definitely it's all about big markets, but uh, I'm a financial guy by training. We need to execute and deliver. So simply said, if we look at current year highlights on top of financial, we signed roughly 45 screens, both domestic market international to continuing to rolling out. So of course, increasing our reckoning revenue model. As I said, I put, put Spider-Man, Ticket has been going through the roof specifically for us. It's a great business model that prove as well that it's razor in the blade approach when it provides tremendous and back on the bottom line. Is the central as well, we have been pivoting and, and working more closer with car manufacturer and, and, and big names. So we signed with the, the F1 uh, Federation a year ago to be the exclusive person. We signed as well with NASCAR right now that we're doing some marketing and some sales, creating trade and distraction. We had had some partnership with BMW that's gonna be uh, in commercial venues and, 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 and survey we're having with that. Same thing as well. So we've been as well converting more people to that aptic. And, and I can confirm you that those racing and car manufacturer have definitely an experience approach to all their business segment from dealer uh, the dealerships uh, to help sales and to promote the experience to connecting with the brands in commercial venue, to creating sim center to make sure that they know what is the pilot and the, the kids of the future, and as well bringing that connection brand at home because they want to sell cars at the end. On the right side as well, that's been our introduction into the consumer market. So in the gaming, we have announced partnership with two companies, Cooler Master, a half a billion dollar company, and of course, Razor, a company in the billion dollar, which is a leader that both are looking at that thick as this next way to develop the gaming experience. Other part was scalability. So why is for people that don't do that is, is, is company now owned by Sony and it's and they have a, a plugin that is used by 65% of the studio 
So DBox is integrating into the WISE plugin to make sure that all those people will be able to add Aptic, but DBox Aptic, but the monetization of that track will have to go through us. Another part that is important is the Aptic industry forum. So to be at the forefront of the leadership, et cetera, the Aptic now as, as people ranging from Apple, Google, and all those people that wants to win Aptic, uh, DBox uh, has been positioned as the chairman of that committee, uh, putting us in great uh, discussion for the standard of the future, the business environment, and of course, influencing about where the Aptic should be going. I like to joke when we're at those, with all those big gun dying down, they're saying, you know what, that DBox, you're the only one right now that is making money out of Aptic and they're bigger than us. So we like that about the leadership we're having, even with their size we're having. So yes, it's about execution. Some that brought revenue this year, some that's gonna be bringing more revenue in the future. Next slide. So quick thing, so I'm, I won't go over information that was be given, but what we like around that is definitely we have key institutional that has been be behind the box for a dime that has been supportive of our, our Aptic play. Definitely. And as well, from a new investor point of view, there's been a lot of execution, a lot of revenue, getting through that storm and getting back with a proper cash level, a bit that positive, etc. So DBOC is at a good space in terms of investment place. Next slide. Vibrant future. Nobody knows the future, but we know one thing. Aptic is going to be happening. You saw on the left uh, 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 a station by Mark Zuckerberg. When everything goes virtual and you want to live the real thing, you don't have any choice. Body will need to do that. What exactly is going to be metaverse? We don't know, but it's already there. People are playing by group in gaming. This is a mini metaverse. So everywhere, that's where Aptic is going to be. Debug is a specialist at Aptic, so that's why we partner with people and we're with the full solution. And that's what we're going to be focusing, ranging from the current segment we have, but of course, looking at new opportunity to partner. So great thing for us right now. Great, of course, a growth in the upcoming years and definitely a bright future about the potential of Aptic into our life. The last thing I would be saying is often I'm saying as, a, as an example, when we all had our phone or we bought an iPhone, people bought a phone because they were talking on the phone. Now we all have phones and we don't talk on the phones. It's because there's hundreds, thousands apps that we're doing and we're doing everything with that. Aptic has the potential to be at the central part of the house because of course you would be in a house and you could even have live concert, roller coasters um, uh, uh, and all those experiences. And for us, it's the same thing. Coding Aptic experiences is the same technology. So in the, so at D-Box, you're gonna be sitting at a D-Box, getting a vest with D-Box or getting some glove in D-Box in the future. That's the only certainty. So we're really happy about it. And that last slide. Investment highlight. So of course, don't be drilling around that. But what I think is there is D-Box is, a, even if there was some COVID situation we had to handle, even as a proven business, I love to say that we were in Aptic before there was even a need in Aptic. But as now the market is right. And what is interesting as well, I do believe with, of course, the, the, our current market that we are a 30 million business that are coming back and we're growing as well as additional opportunities such as consumer, that D-Box is a great growth and value play. And we love recurring revenue and we love that. And that's why we're looking and working even if there's some challenges in the market. Thank you for listening to that quick presentation. Hopefully it gives you a good highlight about D-Box or help you generate question for us today or in the future with uh, Steve, David and I. Thanks for your time. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much, Sebastian. Um, let's jump right into it. Um, I got a couple questions and then I wanna remind everybody that's listening. Uh, you know, if you got any questions you'd like me to ask the team here, just uh, feel, feel free to use the chat function and uh, I will of course ask that question. Um, so the way I see the business right now, there's really sort of three segments you're, you're working towards. You've got the sort of the more established uh, theatrical or, or theater business, but can you give us a, a sense of what the addressable market is the, sort of for, for specifically for your product that you see? Okay, so I'm going to be trying to be as simple as possible by, by segment. So definitely if we're looking, I'm going to go theatrical, mainly focusing theatrical, for racing and home. Um, so definitely in theatrical, um, the, the, we're roughly, I would say, 800 screens and there's all above 
160,000 screen around the world. D-Box won't be in all those screen. It doesn't make any sense. We want to be in the premium location. So that made one, two, three location because we tailor to big movie as a 30 movie that's doing 80% of the box office. So definitely in terms of magnitude, we could be saying that from a $160,000 market, for me, I see that as a 50,000 screen opportunity growing for domestic and of course, internationally, because people are did say in the past, well, Canadian are different and the Indian and they're different from the Russian and they're different, et cetera. But people love entertainment. It's the same content, even if we adapt. So this is for that market. So continue to provide premium offering, recliner offering, VIP offering, because that's the, the, the heavy spender customer. In terms of course of, uh, of, of, of consumer of, on the gaming is definitely we're gonna be approaching by the ISO, but there's million of gaming seat that we're going and where we're going to convert is we have found a, a way to put our technology by let's say retrofitting a standard gaming seat. So between the seat and of course the guard. So that's why we're having a module that we can integrate that. So we have the retrofit potential to integrate those one specifically. I do feel definitely even we're talking about millions of new nets that's the potential that our early adopter is going to be around PC. Uh, so we're focusing on PC gaming before console. Why? Because those people are more uh, uh, technology savvy. They're looking more to test new, new technology and they're the one that are spending the most. So that's why I say we're focusing on PC gaming, which is roughly, uh, I think it's 30% 30, 30 of the whole gaming. You have 50% mobile, roughly 20% on console and 30% on PC, depending on the study you see. So this is where we're focusing first and definitely we're going at the third, first 20% of that population that is spending more after that to arrive with more lower price point to trust that. So that's for the gaming. Home entertainment is all about, of course, home entertainment, but of course, not a lot of people do home theaters in the US, yes, but I'll just give it a comparison. In the US, they sell annually just recliners. I'm not even talking stand the chair half a billion chair between 1,500 and 10,000 US. So just to give one specifically, so definitely we're gonna be targeting home theaters, but as well, we do feel there's a nice market. And so that's why we're making a, a, a study right now through Indiegogo to those teenagers that are chilling in their seat, that are studying in their seat, that are watching content, et cetera. So we see home theater, et cetera. So again, that we're tailoring to, I would say entry level point even if they're, they're lower and things like that. And for, so these are the two, I would say on the key markets, I couldn't go for all, but that's when we part of the key markets in terms of growth potential that we see the more growth on the impact on the business. Uh, so so back to the first one, the, the theatrical, yep. um, give us a, a breakdown of sort of the business model. How do you guys get paid? Uh, so, so first, usually, well, we, we uh, let's say we do a screen. Usually we, we do full screen or part of screen, but let's say sometime we're going to be saying we're going to have between 40 seats and 60 seats in a full auditorium. So that's usually what we do is we sell the, the we sell the seat. Well, we sell the motion seat and we work with seating partner because I don't want to be in seating business. So we provide that. So we sell our system, making a gross margin. And after that, we have, we have some on the premium that people are, are, are paying when they go to the movie, we had a part of that premium that is going back to D-Box. So, so when you look at our financial statement, which is all those recurring revenue or reoccurring revenue, these are driven by ticket sales around the planet. Every ticket sold, while we're talking right now, we're making money being in yen, in US, in euros, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So that's the traditional business model. Sometimes it's creative with some GV joint venture partnership, et cetera. But to keep that simple, that's the model. We sell the seat. And after that, they pay by tickets. So they have, have the content. So it's a, it's a razor in the blade approach. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So you, yeah, clearly you get to keep some of the, uh, the ticket price uh, for, for these movies. Um, then um, give, give us a ballpark of sort of price points that you're looking at for these, uh, you know, the PC gaming type of product and the home entertainment you know, you're, you're basically talking to potential customers here. So what, what does this look like from a purchase price? Yeah, uh, definitely. So right now we're going to be looking uh, specifically to launch product. The supply chain has, has put some increase, of course, as we're seeing 20, 30%, which we don't know it's going to be long-term. But based on, let's say, current price specifically, our initial target was to launch, let's say, product more, uh, let's say below 2000 that's going to be more probably between 2500 to $3,000 product, but we can deliver something into the market. 
Sometimes it's going to be in the four thousand, depending on the on the on the channel you're using, the gross margin mm -hmm. they're requesting, and the volume, etc. But for a volume-based consumer business, you can be saying let's say two nine three thousand dollar, etc. For the lower volume, but interesting one, it might be more in the four thousand range, which is a little bit higher than we were anticipated. But with current price, I don't think there's any shareholder that's one that we sell data at loss. Mm, gotcha. Um, okay, that's fantastic. So um, now you, you saw you saw a pretty you know pretty big jump in revenues uh, over the course of the last year. Now it, you know coming off of very small numbers um, before. Can you give us some sort of um, idea? Have you sort of fully caught up to, to the the slowdown in COVID, or or is there more catching up to do? Uh, well, the good news around that time. So David covered earlier that we were. Where we were trending, we, we we mentioned in the in the, the financial community where we wanted to be a bit that positive, we reached that a quarter in advance. But the good news to, to answer that question is we were on the commercial side only, a roughly if you look at that, a 30 million dollar business before COVID. So of course, if you're looking at that and you're looking at that, we we're, we're trending to run that. So you have that potential to get that business and to grow. Let's say you just re recuperate that business, etc. Plus the consumer business. So definitely, uh, like I said, we were 11 million last year when we were seeing in the COVID. Now, if you look at the figures right now, David, correct, correct me, with roughly 15 or 14 something after three quarter, roughly. Yeah. So, yeah. so trending down there. So yes, there's some potential. As I said, there's some potential value play in terms of getting that business back, which is growing as well, mm -hmm. and as well going on to the consumer and, and getting that time for the consumer market to pick up over two, three years, which is going to be a normal adoption, adoptive curve for technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah the, the entertainment business has the, the attraction park and the LBE and the, some exhibitor that has been, you know, touched or uh, impacted more heavily on the COVID did not necessarily recuperate as well. So there's still some room to grow within that uh, recovery from those uh, attraction park and some exhibitor that will take a little bit longer than expected to, to have their financial health back on the normal. And, yeah, and exactly. One thing, Paul, we, we said, it, it, it's been the, the, the divulging our, our financial statement is, of course, that there's a supply chain availability of components. So we right. said specifically that as an example, the last quarter, right now we have more sales that we can deliver. So I'm not putting any amounts and any forcibility, mm -hmm. of course, but that's a timing right now that delivering sales, it's a matter of getting the components, getting a proper right. price, which is a joke, but right now that is the context. So definitely there's going to be when all those things are going to be pushing back together, uh, sort of have an impact on the figures. Mm -hmm. Understood, understood. Um, give us a sense of I mean, how, how competitive is the landscape? Are you, you know, who are you up against and, and how, you know, how fierce is the competition? Uh, I have to talk by, by, I'll go simply by the, already, already the, I said a key market instead of going too much in detail, but mm. in, in, the, in the home space, there's no one that is there because usually people have just one part of the content. As I said, they would have a seat, but they wouldn't have any content mm -hmm. and they're not connected to all those two zero that we have been for the last 12 years. So in that world, we can be seeing there's close to nothing or there's some simple technology that we can partner devices, shoes, vest, et cetera, which are all smaller company that we can lift by providing our codes to them. So that's, that's in terms of competition. So it's a very few. In the racing business, there's more people onto those rigs specifically. Debug has been that business for 10 years. We have still considered to be the best system available in the market compared to a little pricier, but we have still the best experiences and the best product. And of course, we have proven that on the racing. So that's a part that has been more, I would say, low level actuators or motion system or epic system getting down there. And then theatrical, definitely, I would say that the war is more about where does the exhibitor spend their capex? Then, then saying there's a, there's the people that are doing more what we call 4D experiences with wind and water and things like that, but they bring more capex. You need to, to turn a full room, and we have succeeded to convert people that the people that are coming to the movie to get to really follow a movie, while they want to get immersed into the movie, not distract to the movie. And of course, right now, people have to invest to bring that customer in instead of staying at home and being on Netflix or Crave and all those devices. So this is where there's those two people on that side, but the real competition is around CapEx and how to drive a consumer. 
whereas the exhibitor is going to be putting his money to drive the highest paying customer into their premises. Is Sebastian, is there any customer concentration risk in your business? Like, do you have one or two customers that are predominantly no. the bulk of the sales? Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. No, perfect answer. Um, uh, so I saw that you've got cash on the balance sheet. You've got some debt on the balance sheet. Um, you guys did a financing a little while ago. Um, do you foresee the need for any more financing at this point? We don't need any financing to, to support the current operation, but definitely when we'll have some partnership, we'll have some, let's say some kickoff or inflection point, definitely if you want to grow faster, mm -hmm. it is possible that we'll consider in that when the, if the timing is right and the market is right specifically, but just to grow at a higher pace. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, clearly you've got some new initiatives and some new products you're launching um, more into the sort of the home, home market. But looking further out, where, where else can this technology go? What other neat stuff could you guys be doing? First, in terms of looking at the current one, the, what I'm saying is when we're talking about experiences, I'm going to say people fit the experiences by touching, so through the hands, right? Mm -hmm. Through the body and as well, excuse me, through the butt. So definitely one angle that we're doing right now is the box has the capacity with all this because we have been working with the original content from studios and getting that connection, mm -hmm. we have the potential to use what I'll call our aptic track or our code or experiences and, and, and leapfrog some current technology. So if an example, I would have aptic shows, right? Mm -hmm. The experience they can be making is minimal because usually they don't just listen to the sound and are trying to do something with it. So it's cool, but there's no, for us, we could be using upgrading their system getting to a licensing model. So where the first fit about we do right now is to connect various devices using Aptic code so you can be bringing a full experience. So this is one mm -hmm. goal that we're praying right now, which is good into entertainment and simulation and all those things. So this is one area. If we're looking elsewhere than entertainment, one of the big thing in the future for me will be, of course, there's meta, but let's stay meta in the entertainment is, is gonna be wellness. Because one of the things that has been documented by scientific, and, and of course it's documented and do it commercially, is that proper frequency, well, let's say you want to relax, right? You can be mm -hmm. a, a car music, so that's one level. But it's proven that specific frequency, et cetera, does create, a, let's say, a, I would say a healthy and, and measurable way. Autism mm -hmm. is as well, is as well the, treated with some frequency. So when you talk about wellness, relaxation, mm -hmm. things like that. This is an angle, even training for people at home. Um, uh, so this is two area wellness that I think will be something key because people are stressed, people do that. Mm -hmm. And a good example is when we were at the Cooler, Mar Ma Cooler Master Lunch, a gaming chair, they did a survey with gamer. What would you like to have as next feature? Is it color, is it content? And the first mm -hmm. thing they say, I want to relax. I mm -hmm. want a relaxation mode on my chair. So this is definitely, I think, and we see all those relaxation or calm or application or getting through the roof. So this is probably in the type of, of, of society we are right now. The next, I would say, big thing or interesting thing around Aptic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm hearing more and more of that all the time. So I, I agree with you completely. <coughs> um, Sebastian, um, you, I mean, you're still a relatively small company, albeit you've had some, you know, some, some significant years of, of uh, operations and growth, but what, what, what are your biggest challenges right now? Okay. First, one of the things, I'll use that big challenges to maybe see some kind of shift that was done. Uh, I was named CEO two years ago. And mm -hmm. one of the challenges at some point in time, a long time ago was that Aptic was not known. And, and D-Box try and of course succeed, but with a costly environment to do everything, right? You had to teach people, you had to train people, mm -hmm. you had to install specifically. So one of the challenges, but I way is the way to go is I decided to focus that the core value of D-Box was around Aptic mm -hmm. and, and to work through partnership. Yes, I had shareholders saying, Sebastian, you should be selling direct, you should be selling direct. But one of my foundation was to say, okay, if I want to go after the gaming market, I can go along, spend millions and millions to try to teach the market. But if I go through a partner, let's say Cooler Master, we have a right way. If I'm, I, if I am not able to convince that guy there's a market, 
why should I work it alone? So this is, I would say, a challenge in terms of you need to sign partnership. And partnership, when you're doing that, the revenue might be coming 12, 15 months really to have a significant impact. But I think that's the way to go because we need to leverage people that have proper traction and partner. I'm a technology guy. I'm not a, 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 a theatrical or working isolately. I think we need to partner in a, to an ecosystem and, and make sure we focus on what we're good. So yes, maybe a lesser uh, total revenue, but mm -hmm. I, think, I think a more profitable but a highly scalable business. So this is one of the challenge. The second one I could be saying, which we're looking on the time is supply chain. I say supply chain in terms of availability of component. And, and when you find component, someone can tell you have your component, but it's either you keep it at the same price and you'll have it in 60, day, 60 weeks mm -hmm. or either you pay triple. So it has impact on the current pricing. Right. It has impact on the delivery. And if let's say we have a product that has 300 pieces and you just miss one of them, you cannot mm -hmm. ship. So this has been then that we have delayed, of course, in terms of revenue, Thing, and sometimes it's D-Box and sometimes we deliver everything and our partner is missing a piece. So this is really, if I would be saying from a business development partnership, it's going through partners, but of course you have a dependency over your partner signing them. And internally it's all about supply chain and pricing, et cetera. And yes, we're a good company, but I won't be negotiating. I get Apple to know who is going to have the chip, right? Okay. So these are at that dimension that is progressively, but we still feel it's going to be a, a year of impact still onto that supply chain for, for mm -hmm. all the company on the planet, roughly. Yeah. Yeah. We're hearing that from, from a lot of companies right now. So yeah. you don't want um, to have that job. That's the only job nobody no. <laughs> wants to have right now is to be in supply chain. <laughs> exactly. Um, let's take a few questions. we got a few questions in from the listeners. Uh, I'm going to start from somebody who I know is sort of in the gaming industry, but the question is in the gaming market, what genre are you integrating with? Is it first person shooter, strategy, city builder, et cetera? It, it, you know, what, what can you tell us about that? Excellent. So I'll cover two things. So first, well, d -Bucks has been providing gaming for, for a long period of time, but of course it was all about racing simulation and mm -hmm. aviation simulation at home. So definitely right now what we're launching, as we're saying, one, we're focusing on PC gaming to what I mentioned because of course they're, they're, they're the people that are more early adopters. Secondly, we're looking, the technology we're gonna be putting is gonna be able to provide haptic experiences to hundred games, all the games out there. First person shooter, Assassin's Creed, family, et cetera. So everything mm -hmm. is gonna be around that. So that's the angle where we're doing that. So we have various level of experiences, but that's gonna be interesting. The second part as well, that's gonna be interesting is we know that all those PC, they like to tweak things, right? They tweak their, their, their keyboards, they tweak their mm -hmm. mouses, etc. So the way with the launch, people will have the chance to create profiles, to decide what type of tactic, to take, etc., and to export and exchange between PC gamers. So we do believe, etc., that's going to be creating two things. People are getting enticed by Aptic. Mm -hmm. Secondly, as they're all artists and creators, they're going to be improving things and exchanging to each other. So I think we're all going to be collaborating together to expand the gaming and developing some new stuff. So this is where we're targeting. So of course at 3000 bucks, it's either you're wealthy, you, you trust that and you, you want to do entertainment. So it's pricey, but for people yeah. that are good doing gaming, I would say the first 20%, it's okay. And we mm -hmm. prefer to tackle that and develop that and to create that brand and, and key experiences. And yes, we're looking definitely even if there's price increase with lower price entry product. So that's, if I answer it, that's where we're aiming on those customers. And that's why we, uh, uh, Cooler Master is focusing on PC and same thing with Razer, they're focusing on PC. Yes, mm -hmm. console is going to be arriving and gaming, et cetera, but that's what we're aiming in terms of the of key, key customers. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, cool. So, so um, next question uh, is, what is the insider ownership? And I remember seeing the slide, but also what is, uh, what is the institutional ownership of the, uh, the, the shares outstanding? R roughly, well, it depends on the slides, so it's 25%. So one of our, our well, thank you, uh, Steve. So you see it on the right. So Fidelity mm -hmm. has been there for a long time with us, to believing specifically, and has been there for the last uh, 10 years. C'est la case for the people that know specifically mm -hmm. and La Fonde Solidarité. So these are the key institutional and cup others. So you see on, on the board. The significant insider, uh, sorry, significant institutional ownership clearly there. Um, and then the other question 
uh, from a listener's uh, regards to shares as well. I mean, there's 222 million shares outstanding roughly. Uh, do you have any plans to do a reverse split or do anything about the, the shares outstanding? Uh, good question. Uh, the, 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 long, the long and short answer is probably no. Uh, we do understand that question. We have been revisiting that every year. That's what we have a, a proxy every year to that a decision. The only thing we confirmed by looking at that and by looking at a company that did that is in most of the case, it was not a success, mm -hmm. even if we think. So that's why the, the simple reason is, yes, it's a good question. We've looked at that, but the discussion and the survey prove it's wrong that more than often it doesn't go on the proper direction. But mm -hmm. at some point in time, if for any reason, there would be a financing or something that would make sense, Yes, we're, we, we have the capacity and we'll consider it. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, <clears throat> we're getting down to the end here. Um, what, what we always like to ask is sort of like from the investor standpoint, sort of in our shoes, what do you think we should be watching for in terms of either catalysts or any sort of metrics um, that would, you know, sort of tell us that, that, that you guys are moving in the right direction, that you're succeeding in your business plan? Perfect. Good question. So definitely... Of course, uh, it's all about numbers. So I'll start with the obvious and I'll come mm -hmm. on full on more on the business development side. So definitely, as you were saying, it's important that it, no matter what we do, we track sales. Definitely sales, EBITDA and recurring level are definitely way to go. So these are the standard one. On the, as I was saying, on the, I think it's, it's going to be signature of partnership that can be, bring two things, either and their, well, credibility and then direct selling and selling. My point is mm -hmm. when we're talking about consumer and I'll just get, I'm, I'm not saying it's the good figure, but when we're discussing with consumer people, if they want to sell gaming and they're not able to give me a thousand units to start, we're not addressed. So the point definitely is of course, and of course it could be taking six, nine, 12, sometime a razor takes 18 months to bring a product to the market. So that's the obvious, but yes, what we first thing is to look at partnership that can drive direct revenue. And of mm -hmm. course, so you would have visibility at revenue to come. So this is one angle. Other type of angle that I could be seeing as well that contribute to diff indirectly to the sales, but are key important is into the aptic progression, we need to, to big, big brand to endorse our story, right? So definitely, I'll take an example. Or, or when we sign the federal, uh, the, the Automobile Federation International Agreement to be exclusive, I don't have the matrix, but I can tell you a lot of people call here specifically because they have influence on car manufacturer, F1, et cetera. So the and same thing with NASCAR. So it's important that people jump in because it proves the, the concept of Aptic. Definitely you get those brands. So of course, it doesn't mean that all those things generate direct revenue. Mm -hmm. But I think it, it does provide that the, there's a strain behind the wall that is getting created. I'll joke about one when we when we uh, issued that we, we had a, a partnership with Ubisoft 18 months ago. The stock went from four cents to 29 cents in a week. Wow! <laughs> so 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 and of course that was the direction we're gaming. For some people can get excited, but I think it proves that even sometimes the arena there, the foundation is really strong. We have more and more content arriving. We have more and more partners. So that's what we should be seeing. If we're going to relaxation, there should be a partnership at some point in time in relaxation. Yes, people, we're going to be seeing Sebastian, are you talking to Netflix? Are you talking to Disney Plus? The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. But there's baby step. There's very recursive and strategy. You don't go to, I can make a deal tomorrow morning, Paul, with Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. If I want to throw them 10 million right. to start talking. So, but we have been creating our credibility to the theatrical we have been doing VR project with them specifically. So I'm just saying that, yes, we are there. The question people are sharing, asking us, we're doing that. There's things that are bringing, of course, shorter, but we're building the foundation so it's strong. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's going to be about partnership, direct selling, and brand endorsement into the program on top of traditional. So that's what I would be looking because we're looking at volumetry, right? More units. The mm -hmm. commercial business is nice. It makes great results aside from the theatrical, but it's project driven. Theatrical provide that recurring revenue, which is really interesting. But if the consumer is building that volumetry, so we can move from a system sales to a licensing business model mm -hmm. and focus on providing aptic codes. That's where we're aiming. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, well, we're, we're sort of 
near the end here. And what we always like to do is give you guys an opportunity to sort of cover anything that we have either missed or any, you know, if you want to sort of give us a key message or a key takeaway, what would you want to make sure everybody uh, leaves today remember? First thing, aptic will happen. And I'll say again, aptic will happen. Mm -hmm. Do we know everything? The answer is no, but there's been PhD writing that aptic is like the introduction of sound when people thought that sound would be discouraging people to go to the movie. That was there specifically. So it is happening. So for me, it's that's one definitely. So that's the first one. One. Secondly, I'm obviously saying D box was of a long time. It's easy to say today. I would say technology in search of a market. When D box was started in 2000, early 2000, great technology, royal precise is what thought for 2022, 20 years in advance. There was no need for aptic specifically. It was just freak people that built something specifically. So, so what, I'm, what we're trying to do right now is, yes, we're not the biggest in, in the aptic world, we're, we're the biggest company on the planet in terms of expertise. But of course, right now, what is interesting is, yes, we need to make sales. Again, we need to make EBITDA. Again, we need to do everything we said, but we need to have strategic positioning that D-Box has that understanding and technology from understanding the body, ingesting content, distributing content, monetizing content, et cetera, so anyone serious that would want to replicate that, they can spend 200 million. Mm -hmm. But at some point in time, they might be saying, let's talk to those guys. So if I would be saying as simple as that is, yes, we're going to be managing the company, all about the bit of financial, et cetera. But I can be sure we want to make sure that the value is captured, perceived by shareholders. But more importantly as well, is I'm happy that shareholders are going to be banging in on D-Box, but we want to make sure that the people, when they're going to be jumping even faster in Apple or something like that, we are on this phase every day. <laughs> as simple mm -hmm. as that. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, I mean, clearly we keep hearing about virtual reality, keep hearing about metaverse. I think we're, we're you know, we're in it now. I don't think you have to wait another 20 years for, for this to happen. We are clearly uh, in it now. And you guys seem like you're very well positioned uh, within those. Um, listen, if somebody wants more information, what's your website address or what's the best way to get more information from you guys? Yeah, so, so of course we have a David CFO, Steve Lee, our VP IR, Lee, so it's a, www.d-box.com. So all our information are there. We're putting our presentation, we're public, so all those, et cetera. So we're, we're improving that as much. And we are going to be doing, of course, a periodic communication with the street because it's important for us. We want to make sure we have proper messaging, things going great, execution. And when there's challenges in the street, we're going to have a transparent as we can in terms of technology and, and focusing on delivering. So happy that we come on our site or that they call us, you yeah, have more questions, we'll be more than happy to take time. Fantastic. Well, I listen, this has been fun because I, I, I love new technology like this and I can certainly see uh, the application. So, um, you know, thanks. Uh, thank you all, all for joining us today. Um, we've been speaking with the team at DBox Technologies and uh, CEO Sebastian Millot, uh, David Montpetit and Steve. I'm sorry, Steve, I, I don't have your last name here, but uh, thank you all for joining us today. And uh, listen, we look forward to catching up with you guys in the near future and hopefully uh, uh, when, uh, when we see uh, more news to, to talk about. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you, all shareholders of future or potential, etc. Have a good day. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much.